So, I've made a habit of talking about the cartoon renaissance on this channel, and for good reason. This was a defining point in not just Cartoon Network, but animation history as a whole. It was a time that fundamentally shaped how a lot of people viewed animation, taking the public perception and changing it from animation being just for kids into accepting it as more of an art form. I'm saying all this because when people talk about the renaissance on Cartoon Network, they tend to forget the fact that while the first generation was in the middle of their airings, Cartoon Network was already working on who was going to take over the time slot once those shows had run their course. So let's talk about one that never got a chance. Hello everyone and welcome to the Void Theater. As always, I'm your host Alexander. And like I've said, I've spent a fairly decent amount of time on this channel talking about both Cartoon Network and the Cartoon Renaissance. Honestly, more so than any reasonable person should. But on my defense, it's an interesting topic to talk about. This was a time when Cartoon Network, for lack of a better term, ran shit. They were to go-to for animation and technically still are. Shows like Adventure Time, Regular Show, and Gumball were as creative as they were financially lucrative. Seriously, there's like five Adventure Time console games. For as good as the show was, I will never understand how that happened. Point is, these shows made money. And a lot of it. Which makes it all the less surprising that even before they were reaching their conclusions, Cartoon Network was working on their spiritual successors. And thus began the age of the Neo-Renaissance. Essentially, these were the shows being groomed to take over the time slots when the first generation of shows were nearing the half point of their lifespan. For Adventure Time, there was Steven Universe, Regular Show had We Bear Bears, so on and so forth. But then you get to... Gumball, a show that didn't really have a successor and for plainly obvious reasons. Gumball was created around the midway point of the golden age, which meant that it had all the benefits of creative freedom and all the negatives of weird business practices. It would be cancelled, then uncancelled, there was a movie in the works, then there wasn't, then there was again, it was a mess. Which also meant that Cartoon Network wasn't too focused on trying to find a replacement for us. But that doesn't mean there wasn't a pilot that could have served as a replacement had it been picked up for a series. Which finally brings us to the topic of the video, the pilot of Welcome to My Life, a show that I believe was meant to replace Gumball. Now I want to explain this before we go any further, I am in no way shape or form saying that Welcome to My Life was attempting to copy or plagiarize the amazing world of Gumball. Both shows are widely different in tone and how they handle themselves. What I am saying, and what I'll explain later, is that Welcome to My Life fits perfectly into the style of show that Cartoon Network was looking to replace but I've prattled on long enough. So, without any further ado, let's raise the curtain, put this show on stage, and see how it plays out. Alright, so starting with the obvious thing, and you're gonna notice this show bears more than a passing resemblance to Gumball. It has that same blend of real-world settings mixed with 2D animation. And I like it. It fits the tone that this pilot was trying to make. For Gumball, the whole point of that style was to create this almost weird world where it looked like anything and everything could and does exist, and with Welcome to My Life, it feels like it's meant to give us a fish out of water vibe to it. Speaking of, let's talk about the pilot, which is a fish out of water story. The pilot follows Doug Takeshi or Tikesh Ito, and if that last name sounds familiar, that's because it should. This pilot was created by Elizabeth Ito, one of the major storyboard directors for Adventure Time. And while I will get into all the more business related details later, it feels important just to let that be known. But like I said, later. Anyway, the main plot follows Doug Takeshi or Tikesh Ito. A Japanese monster living in a world of humans. It's not the craziest plot, but I think it works well. It's shot in this documentary style show like The Office, except here the camera crew and the interviewer interact a lot more with Doug. But they essentially follow him around as he lives his daily life at school and see how he interacts with the humans, who are seemingly still getting used to the idea of monsters living among them. Essentially, the entire plot serves as an allegory for the idea of immigration, and while I could see the argument that the topic might be too sensitive for a younger audience, there are two things to remember here. One is that the target demographic for this show was more in the teenage at the time, and two is that this wasn't the only show that dealt with topics like this. A majority of We Bear Bears and its movie dealt with the idea of not just immigration, but also the concept of racism and segregation, including a very obvious stand-in for someone who's supposed to essentially be a clan member, right down to keeping the human race pure. So, it's not as if the channel has never touched this stuff before. Though here it's far more subtle. But the show follows Doug as he goes through his daily life in school and lets him talk about all the complications that come with being a monster in a world for humans, including his size, trying to fit in with the humans, and generally just being accepted at school. But the climax of the pilot is when t -Cash makes a joke about another guy looking like him, which, because this is school, leads to the guy wanting to fight him afterwards. Which... Okay, I guess, not sure how smart it is to fight a creature that's a foot taller than you and can breathe fire, but school rules. Someone makes fun of you, so you gotta fight them. But I do want to take a minute here and talk about the animation. 
because while I did talk about it briefly, it was only broad strokes, but I really love how expressive Doug is in this scene. Despite being a monster and not having a lot of detail in his face, his expression is so clear and it shows how much pain he's in. And like he said, he didn't mean for it to be an insult because he doesn't see his looks as being insulting. And the animation captures how he feels perfectly. His face drops and you can see this level of sadness in him that just feels so genuine. I know it seems weird to say it like that, but so many shows seem to either exaggerate or play down facial expressions. So it's nice to see a show hit that healthy middle ground and make it feel like you're looking at a person even when they're not a person. But anyway, the short ends with no fight as the two manage to work it out and become friends. It's a bit anticlimactic, but considering this is supposed to be more grounded, that's kind of expected. And that's pretty much it for Welcome to My Life. It's an odd pilot, but a fun one. Now I did say that I thought this show had the potential to succeed Gumball, and I stand by that. Now, like I said, when the peak of Cartoon Network was happening, they were already looking to replace these shows with successors to ensure that they could keep this hype train going and to also keep cash in their pockets. It's why around this time certain shows were wildly different but still had similar themes to other shows. Adventure Time and Steven Universe were both magically themed shows with slice of life adventures and an overarching story with heavy themes. Regular show and We Bear Bears had a heavy focus on pop culture and reference humors, though both shows pointed in the opposite direction with that. But with Gumball, we never got that because it had the unfortunate luck of coming out at the tail end of the Cartoon Network peak. So it kinda got put through the ringer, which as it turned out was a blessing and a curse in disguise. On one hand, being at the very end meant every time a season ended, it was also a fight to make sure the show didn't end up cancelled. But on the other hand, it was able to get a lot more attention simply because it was one of the only cartoons on the channel that didn't have this weird hate base attached to it like Teen Titans Go. But getting back to Welcome to My Life, you'll notice that while the show does share certain aspects in art style to Gumball, in terms of humor, it's basically the opposite. Whereas Gumball is wilder and more random, Welcome to My Life takes itself very slow. But I would argue that aside from that, the two shows do share some remarkable similarities. At their cores, both shows are about a day-to-day -day school life setting and the adventures that come with it. It's a lot like regular show and We Were Bears in that regard. Both were shows that use referential humor as a selling point in their shows, but they were polar opposites in what type of references they relied on. Regular show relied on 90s style references, and We Bear Bears used modern jokes. And it's the same thing here. Same style of comedy, just on different spectrums. So with all the praise I'm giving the show, it does bring up the question of what happened to it? Well, if you look at the timestamp on the Cartoon Network YouTube channel, you might remember another short that came out alongside this one. That being Infinity Train. And remember all the negative things I said about the end of the Cartoon Network peak? Well, this is one of them because Infinity Train is arguably the poster child for bad networking decisions from Cartoon Network. And one of those decisions was to go back and forth on cartoons themselves. I've talked about these issues before in a previous video and I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. But essentially, Cartoon Network tried to recreate the popularity of Adventure Time without realizing what helped make the show popular. Which meant that shows and pilots that were getting strong followings were starting to get more and more ignored. Which isn't just me giving some high and mighty praise to this pilot. According to Wikipedia, this short was only second place in terms of viewership on the official channel. The one in front of it? Infinity Train. Also, I say Wikipedia because in all their infinite knowledge, Cartoon Network deleted the actual pilot from their channel. I assume to hide their shame at canceling a fantastic show. But even ignoring that, it's not like this show was made by some unknown name in the industry. Not counting Elizabeth Ito's work on Adventure Time, the pilot also had voice work by Ian Jones Quarterly, who at the time was one of the major directors for Steven Universe and was working on a cartoon of his own with OKKO. OK so again, it's not like this pilot was made independently. It had some major ties to the channel as a whole with some serious backing in it. But in the end, the pilot was all we ever got with no mention of it ever being picked up for a series. Which honestly just feels like wasted potential. The show was definitely an odd concept, but I'd be lying if I said I was, it wasn't extremely well done. And while I couldn't see it going as long as Gumball, I still think that it could have carved out its own fan base on the channel. It tells a story that I feel a lot of people could relate to, in a way that's approachable for a wide audience. Which honestly means it's probably for the best that Modern Cartoon Network didn't get their claws into it, considering it would have definitely been cancelled. But what do you think? Could Welcome to My Life have succeeded Gumball, and would you have given a chance if it had ever been picked up for a series? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Until next time, as always, I've been your host Alexander, and I hope to see you back in my theater.